profits. I have with me Claudia from Cryptos Chain. I have Jimmy from the digital channel. And I have with me Simon, who's one of the team from BitTubers. And I'm going to be facilitating conversation between Claudio and Jimmy and Simon. And one thing I have to let you know, it may look to you like Simon is asleep. He <laughs> is not asleep. Are you asleep? I am blacked out. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Actually, well, uh, also literally, because uh, Zoom just gave me a black screen. I didn't touch anything. Oh. Well, what, oh. just so you know, what we can see of you, Simon, is you're sitting there with your headphones and your eyes are closed. Oh, well, that isn't very flattering. Uh, so sh should I just lo log, in, log in without a webcam? Maybe it's just my heart. His eyes are open from my side. Well, let's, let's see if we can remove uh, the stop video. This is like Schrodinger's uh, webcam or something. Why don't you just stop your video, Simon? Yeah, sure. One second. Yeah, it just freezes every time. It's the internet connection, I guess. Could be. Okay. Okay, there we go. Uh, we have three Simons. Wait, two Simons. Okay, I've joined without video now. Maybe in, in post you can, uh, I don't know. Okay. Just, just I'm paste, paste a meme or something on my face. I'm a, I put a bit Tuber's logo on here. Okay, so I'm going to carry on. Okay, so I have with me uh, Claudia from Cryptos Chain, uh, Jimmy over here from Digital Channel, and this is the YouTube logo. And what we're going to be talking about <laughs> is we're going to be, uh, I'm going to be facilitating a conversation between uh, Claudio and Jimmy and Simon from BitTubers. And um, Simon's having problems with his webcam, which is why we can't see him, but he has been on my channel before. And I want to thank all three of you for making yourself available for this. Thank you so much. And everybody, this is not investment advice. Comments and all the relevant links and subscriptions, do all of that stuff. And we're going to start first, uh, Cryptos. Uh, Claudia, your, your YouTube channel, Cryptos Chain, you're also on BitTubers. Yeah. You're just on BitTubers. And Jimmy, your channel is on digital YouTube, not yet on BitTubers. Maybe soon. And then Simon, you're one of the teams at, Simon, at BitTubers. Simon, do you want to say very briefly what it is you do? Uh, so I'm Simon. I'm one of the systems designers at, uh, at BitTubers. Basically, it, it means uh, I'm at the concept and ideas uh, stage of the process, uh, all the way up to uh, a bit of development and, uh, and workflow, basically. So uh, I... Um, yeah. Yeah, so I, I create the tickets and I test the tickets uh, to to get the stuff done, basically. And most of what you see on BitTubers uh, at some point uh, originated uh, from me in this case. So. Yes, very good, very good. Okay, yeah. and then what prompted this video is I think around the 22nd, 23rd of December 2019, uh, a number of YouTubers started getting content strikes from YouTube and having videos deleted for uh, violations of their content policy, either sale of regu regulated goods, which at no point does it say that cryptocurrencies are such regulated goods. And um, this, this has happened to me. I'm not, I'm not able to post for about a week. I received strikes, have 85 of my videos deleted. And um, there's, a lot of, there's been a lot of noise on the Twitter sphere. And at the time of recording, YouTube have said it's a mistake and they're gonna be restoring the channels and restoring the deleted videos. But I thought it'd be a good idea to get a couple of YouTubers together with BitTubers so these YouTubers could find out about BitTubers. So the whole idea of this is for an introduction, right? Sure. So, uh, Claudio, Jimmy, I'm gonna leave it to, to one of you. I'm just gonna be keeping the conversation moving. Which one of you would like to start? Well, actually, if it's okay, I would like to go ahead and have a, a crypto chain uh, lead the conversation since mm -hmm. he is another tuber that is on uh, BitTube. So uh, if you don't mind. No? Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, actually, the first question I have for Simon is uh, what makes BitTubers different than YouTube? Give me one point that actually differentiates you, which is like a strong reason for people to start uploading their content on BitTubers? 
Uh, I guess it's two things. Um, if you look at BitTubers itself, it's part of the BitTube uh, ecosystem. And the way we set things up is um, that we have this, this airtime monetization uh, system. Uh, and the whole point of that is uh, that, that you have an uncensorable um, econom economy, basically. Uh, so you can't censor, you can demonetize someone. Uh, so that's that's step one, and on top of that, we've built BitTubers, um, and BitTubers itself is is just a uh, a social platform that has WebTorrent integration, so it's peer to peer, and um, in the state that it is right now, technically, it's uh, there's still centralized parts such as uh, cloud storage for the for the front end, um, and the the moderation system is uh, is still yet to be uh, decentralized. Um, but all of those pieces have been planned out. So um, if we uh, say jump at about six months from uh, from now, um, what you will have is um, is a system with uh, with user storage nodes. So people uh, host their own content, and if something gets delisted from the website, for example, they still can share that content with other users. So outside of the outside of the platform itself, via WebTorrent. Um, and the, uh, as for the moderation part, that will all be community driven. Uh, so this will happen with, uh, with voting and stuff like that in a transparent way so that you can um, uh, see uh, who is reporting, who is voting, um, and also who is in the decision making process to make people accountable for the decisions that are being made. This is one of the big problems in YouTube is that it's completely a black box. You don't know who you're talking to, if you're actually talking to a person in the first place. And um, you'd have basically no recourse. And uh, I think this is a, a pretty easy problem for YouTube to solve, but they've never done it. Um, and uh, we've just gone back to the drawing board and thought, how can you make a distributed, uh, basically a community moderation system um, that uh, that puts power back into people's hands, but also complies with uh, with laws and copyrights and also all that kind of stuff. So, uh, like, how do you build a system like that? And uh, I think we've um, we've made a good effort to plan it all out. It just needs some time to uh, to be developed. So, okay. does does that does that answer your question a little bit? Yeah, it does. It does. And I do have a lot of other questions as well, but I would like Jimmy to ask the next one. If, if uh, sure. If, right. if, uh, thank you for that. Um, and he actually uh, hit one of my main concerns, uh, which is copyrights. How do you plan to combat copyrights? Your assignment is decentralized, peer driven, mm -hmm. policed by groups or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. So let's say someone decides to post a video with Beyonce music that extends the 4.4 seconds or whatever it is allowed of playtime on any video at the moment right. driven by the law. So um, let's say um, what's to stop anybody coming after you if a person decides to post a video with a Beyonce song <laughs> that is extended past the time. I'm using Beyonce because it's the only thing that came out. <laughs> you got to bring up the Queen Bee sometimes, guys. <laughs> good, good question. All the single ladies, right? Um, well, so so can you uh, state your question clearly so I, I know exactly what to Basically, ask. someone, let's say I, I did, since I'm on YouTube still, right? Mm -hmm. And I decide to go to uh, BitTuber. How are you going to prevent me from uploading a video that has 10 minutes worth of Beyonce playtime? How are you going to stop people from coming after you? to hit you on any copyright laws for allowing that content to be placed? I think that question is twofold. Uh, and you have the, the upload uh, process, of course. And if you look at YouTube, all of that's being scanned uh, with AI. Um, right now we don't have AI, it's just a manual process. Uh, so I think in, in practical terms, um, uh, the moderation itself would always be uh, iterative, it would be a, a feedback loop. So uh, you would be able to upload anything without um, without a, f a first strike or a first detection mechanism. 
um, and moderation through the community moderation system uh, would would get or well, not voted on, but would get reported if someone uh, thinks it is copyright, and then it would need to be reviewed, of course. Um, then the 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 question on top of that, of course, is um, how do you deal with uh, piracy, for example, because there are examples yeah. of clearly um, uh, some content is uh, maybe immediately objectionable or I should say just clearly illegal like like child porn for example um, or something that's just against the rules like porn uh, for example or uh, well the, this stuff happens every day we had child porn on the, on the platform actually we took it down within uh, within seconds but it was there so it was a scary moment um, and uh, and stuff like uh, just uploading movies like Spider-Man or whatever. The, this happens, happens on every platform. And the question is, how do you deal with that uh, on a moderation side, like the, uh, mechanically? And how do you deal with that on a policy side? Like, do you extend yourself the uh, the freedom to just delete it right away because it clearly violates something? And so in that process, you need to make sure that um, that the policy makes sense, and, and secondly, that uh, there's always a way to um, uh, uh, to iterate, or how do you say it? To um, um, I'm, I'm losing words here. Possibly uh, mediate the situation. Hmm. Um, to well, I'm I'm missing the word here. Um, Okay. Don't, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah it, sure. it, it's okay. It's but right. I do. Uh, before I pass it on to um, our, uh, you know, Crypto Rich, our moderator, uh, before the next valley, I do have an add-on question. Okay, so uh, we have a group, part of the community, that just loves Beyonce, and they will not report them uh, <laughs> or report the person. Uh, is Simon willing to take the hit uh, based on copyright laws? Uh, with the legal team to say, hey, listen, we had no control over this. This is what happened, so on. We will take it down, blah, 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 blah. Basically, are you guys able to fight any of these situations? Because we can go forever. And I hate if scenarios, but I would be more comfortable just asking you straight up, okay, are so, you ready to fight? So, so yeah. to, um, uh, to repeat your question, just to make sure that I understand it, um, if, say, and there is an official DMCA claim uh, and the video is taken down because we have to. Is there anything we could do to to um, uh, to protect creators in that way? Is that what you're asking? No, actually quite the opposite. Uh, what I'm saying is like, you know, uh, you're, you're asking the community to p police themselves, right? Uh, to report each other and so on. Yeah. So let's say there's a community that just loves Beyonce and they will not report somebody that posted a said Beyonce video, mm. are you guys ready to kind of um, put up the fight to defend yourself? Uh, and then after every the, proce uh, the process is done, take that video down. Are you guys ready to take a fight for a, uh, a video that is not reported? Uh, well, yes. Um, but th this goes deeper into uh, uh, the plans for the moderation system. Um, and uh, the way that we're setting it up is that uh, like we as a company or not just a company but also um, like, uh, assigned moderators basically what they do is they moderate the moderators so they make sure that the rules are actually being applied properly um, so that's uh, I think on YouTube that's maybe part of the, the process that, that is missing that uh, you know rules are not being um, not being executed uh, equally to uh, to different creators. This is clear on different platforms, um, and we want to make sure that uh, at least the rules are being ap applied properly. So, for for everyone, it's the same kind of rules. And so, if a um, let's say something gets reported, um, and then uh, a batch of other users vote on that report whether they think it is correct or incorrect um, then if according to the rules it is clearly uh, a correct decision but there are say 20 or 30 percent of users that voted uh, that, it, that it isn't correct then within the system they would get a lower weight for the next vote for example so mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, so VR weighting system, you could sort of, um, in a ranking system, uh, you could filter out the bad apples for people that are maybe uh, just voting maliciously or trying to sort of downvote reports um, uh, that are clearly copyrighted, for example. Stuff like that. So, and if, right you, if, if you take enough people, take an, a big enough batch, then at least you can approximate uh, fairness. It's not, it's not perfect, of course, but uh, the idea is there that uh, it's sort of a democratic system. All right. Thank, all right. Thank you, Simon. Sure. Simon, thank you so much. And just to summarize, right? So, one, as a hybrid platform right now, Bit, the company behind BitTubers, they can, they can remove um, content that violates copyright, but also violates laws like incitement to hatred or pornography. They can remove that. And then once the moderator system is in place, the moderators get to vote on what can stay and what doesn't stay. And the moderators themselves are moderated through the voting system. Mm. So that will keep it all, all in balance. Um, okay, so th thank you for that. And then uh, let me see, J Jimmy, any, any, anything you want to ask? Not Jimmy. Claudio, anything you want to ask? Next? Yeah, just to kind of extend on that. So uh, when you say that people will be able to vote, like moderators will be able to vote, what are the conditions to be a moderator, to have the power to vote? I know that you guys also use a token. So what's the use case for the token? And does that help with the power of voting as well? Okay, Simon, before you answer that, let me just say, so there's two questions in there. The moderator system is still being worked out, as I understand, so that, and it's not yet in process, right? Yes. So what I would like to do to keep this moving is to move on to the tube coin. And this will include, Simon, if you give a little explanation of how the airtime module works. Because BitTubers isn't just YouTube, a decentralized YouTube, it's a whole lot more. That's correct, yeah. Uh, so where to start? Or where start do with the start? how does the cube coin work in that? Uh, within the ecosystem. So as I mentioned before, um, a BitTube itself is an ecosystem. We have two websites. One is BitTubers.com, which is the platform. And we have BitTubeApp.com, uh, which is the rest of the products. Uh, and there will be more products on this website. Um, the main product here is is the airtime module and airtime extension. And these are two pieces of software uh, that are uh, basically the pillars of the airtime monetization system. And what the system does is um, it allows us to monetize anything on the web. Um, so we, we have this cryptocurrency tube, um, which is a proof of work coin, similar to, to Bitcoin. Um, and uh, the unique thing about this crypto is um, that uh, this coin is being mined in about half of the of the block rewards that is uh, that is earned by miners actually uh, is funneled into this airtime system and uh, the airtime system records uh, how many how many minutes or how many seconds users are uh, uh, are browsing and watching content uh, and stuff like that uh, each day and then each day um, the, the block reward is distributed according to the watch time. So there's a limited amount of, of tubes uh, every day, and this gets distributed according to uh, each user's watch time, uh, uh, divided by the total watch time of, um, of the creator and the viewer as well. So you have a pool for creators, which is the, the majority of the, of the coins, and that's a small pool for viewers as well. So if you if you install the extension and you watch content uh, each day, you uh, accumulate airtime uh, up to a few hours, and you get rewarded for that. So at the end of the month, you uh, have some liquidity, uh, let's say a few dollars, and you can spend this money or recirculate it uh, in the form of donations, for example. Um, that's basically the idea to have a lot of users that are that are a little bit liquid and can uh, recirculate it, uh, say donate to their favorite creators or just cash it out if they want to, um, or or use the coins for a discount or something like that. Um, but the majority of coins uh, goes to the creators, and of course the majority of airtime goes to the creators if they have a lot of uh, viewers watching them at the same time. So yes, okay. so I have. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I have the browser extension 
for the airtime app and I get a few tube coins every day just for using the internet. And they get knocked into the browser extension wallet and then I can, I can reward other uh, BitTubers, I can pay tube on other websites, um, just pay tube that way. So it starts circulating. So, you know, anybody uh, who is watching this on my channel, my airtime uh, link is in the description below and then you get a little bonus and I get a little bonus. So you get free two coins. It, and you said it's like Bitcoin, like it's a proof of work, but it's actually a fork of Monero. So it has privacy features. Yes, correct, correct. And this is actually necessary uh, for privacy laws because we also, uh, we have an exchange license and a wallet license. So it would be a problem if everything was, um, uh, was public. And uh, for example, if there are, uh, if, if, uh, private information was leaked and it would be able to be traceable on a, on a public blockchain and this is not desirable. So the privacy actually makes sense in this case. Yep. Okay. And then content creators, the more content they post, the more engagement they get from viewers and everything, the more tube coins they receive from the block, block record. Yeah, and then also for the viewers, yeah. if you're watching this video, you can reward any one of us with tube coins. Yeah of, course, yeah, of course, you can, with, with the extension, also on the platform itself, um, uh, on the platform itself, there's an airtime module, which takes some, some of the, the features of the extension uh, in, in a very light package, for example, uh, donations. So on the platform, you can, uh, you can donate if you're locked into the extension, then they, they are linked, and uh, you can donate to one another. And uh, on the extension itself, if you well, if you're in the extension and you go to say a YouTube uh, account, then you open the extension and it's uh, it lists the YouTube account's name and you can actually donate directly to that YouTube account. Um, if that YouTuber is not yet uh, a, a BitTuber itself, he hasn't signed up yet, then these coins will be parked on his account and the moment that he signs up, he can claim those coins automatically when he links the the YouTube account. So. You could do that now um, to uh, to the heathen that hasn't uh, signed up yet. So I mean, you can install it and experience it for yourself. <laughs> okay. Um, right. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. I know. No, no. Actually, like crypto crypto is waiting for. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I had a question, question about the uh, the coins. What's the total supply? Uh, what's the circulating supply of uh, tube coins? And also, how much? How many coins does the team actually own? So let's see right now. I'll go to bitupapcom slash coin. I think, yeah. So if you go to bitupapcom at the top, you have um, Bitcoin. I think we were about at two, 250 uh, or thereabouts million so the, t the total um, theoretical supplies is 1 billion that's the final supply okay um, and right now we're about uh, we're, we're at 20 or 25 percent uh, I think so in a, in a couple of, of years we'll, we'll be at 50 percent and after that the uh, the inflation curve decreases uh, very steeply it's uh, about the same kind of inflation that uh, Bitcoin has it is less steep than uh, Monero or uh, or one or of the other uh, similar privacy coins. Well, so that's, I'm sorry, what was that circulating supply again? About 250, I think. I'll go to the Explorer now. And 250 million. 250 yeah. million, roughly. And you'll have a total supply of a billion. And the other question was, how many coins do the team have? Yeah. Um, well, by heart, I actually don't know. Um, we buy all of our coins ourselves. There was no ICO or pre-mine. So anything that was either mined by, um, by the team itself uh, or purchased. I think, we, I think recently Saber did post um, uh, his, uh, I think it was his, uh, uh, his Bittrex account where he buys his coins. And I think it said something like 25 million or something. So he's been accumulating slowly. <laughs> right. Uh, I, I'll be honest with you on the Jimmy, surface. Jimmy, if I, can just, before you, if I can just say something about the funding. So they didn't do an ICO. That's they correct. didn't do the, 
It's a fair launch, no pre-mine, it's a proof of work coin, and how they've funded it is Sabre, the CEO, has other businesses and is using the money from those other businesses to fund this. That's correct, yeah. This is um, essentially, well, it's maybe too big to call a side project, but he is funding it out of his own, uh, out of his own pockets. That's correct. Yeah. Sorry, Jimmy, you wanted to ask something. Oh, no, uh, just from the surface, I would love to know more about, um, you know, uh, how the, the team token is distributed. But from the surface, I actually, this is the, something that I really liked, and I think that it's actually pretty fair. Uh, 1 billion, 25 million in circulation, 25% owned by the team. It's actually on the surface, is, um, I, I, I can say that it's reasonable. Um, yeah, sure. And uh, I think if you, um, if, if you look at what a pre-mine represents, well, we don't have a pre-mine, but um, I, th I think there are some projects where, where you could say, well, a, a pre-mine is reasonable if it's maybe 5% or something, you know, something like that, a small amount. Um, but in, in, this, in our case, um, you can say, uh, if we, even if we owned uh, the majority of supply, just by by purchasing that would mean we we are putting our money where our mouth is right it's all private equity uh, and uh, and it's an open market so anyone can buy these coins so uh, and that's different from a pre-mine and that the pre-mine doesn't actually uh, add any risk to the team it just gives uh, in theory it gives, gives the team a lot of coins to dump at, at the top which you know, always happens at every altcoin uh, season. Um, uh, but in in our case, we're uh, we're putting up, or in in Saber's case uh, specifically, uh, he's putting in his own money. So I think that's a, <laughs> it's a brave move, to say the least. Yes, thank sure. you, Claudio. Yeah, sorry, I have uh, one other question. Uh, how do you guys plan to market the product? Because as you probably know, uh, marketing is everything in the crypto space. If you don't market your product, it will die out. It's as simple as that. Good question. Uh, what is your strategy for marketing? Good question. Um, so, uh, because we have, uh, we have these, these different um, products like intertwined, right? You have the BitTubers. You can see the BitTubers platform itself as a as a non-crypto product. You can use it like that. There are memberships uh, and there's a revenue system that's just based on, on fiat. Um, the, the way that we're trying to set it up is the BitTubers platform itself uh, doesn't require crypto because we, we think for the regular user, uh, crypto is still a scary thing. Um, so if there were like wallets integrated and stuff like this, uh, it would probably scare off a lot of people. So we've decided to basically uh, strip out the crypto part and make it modular. Um, so the question then becomes, how do we, uh, how do we market uh, our, our products? Do we do it separately or do we do it in um, uh, like all together? And then it becomes kind of a, a jumbled mess. How do you, how do you sell this? Um, uh, how do you sell this story in a cohesive, package in, in a few one-liners, right? Um, do, you, do you know what I mean? Um, actually, I have a question, if you don't sure. mind jumping in. Sure. Uh, maybe I, I'm getting caught up in semantics here. Let me know. I'm okay to I'll back off. Okay. But um, what does modular modularity have anything to do? You're talking about making it modular, but this is, um, I, I think, a very, you know, on the target move that you guys are making here, which is completely replace YouTube. What can be modular about that? Maybe I misunderstood. Um, what I mean with modular is on the uh, on the systems uh, side. So the the way that we are um, the way that we're building it from the ground up, the the, monet the, the monetary system, um, the 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 decentralized storage system, um, the uh, and the, the video platform itself. These are different products that can live on their own. And um, uh, the way that, uh, that we want to market it, but the, the way that we want to achieve adoption is, uh, is mainly uh, through these two avenues. You have this, uh, uh, this airtime uh, system that can basically 
uh, be applied to any website. You have an airtime module that can be integrated into, into apps. Um, and so more fulfilling the embedding purposes for everything else. Right, right. And the idea here is that, uh, that you try to uh, sort of, um, maybe you can say spread your risk in that sense, um, that you try to get users from wherever you can and not just rely on, on a video platform because then your whole, uh, your whole mission, your whole uh, product relies on the success of one platform. And maybe there, you know, maybe the, the launches a, the, the, a, a better platform is just around the corner and it dethrones you and then your entire sort of structure uh, is weakened. And the yep. way that we're trying to set it up is spread our risk in that we have a very strong monetization system that can be applied anywhere. So that can also find users anywhere and that's, and we can funnel those users into BitTubers and the other way around. That users who, uh, who sign up to BitTubers, they install the extension and they and then in turn, they become a, uh, an airtime user and they, then they expand the airtime system. So you have these two avenues of attack basically. So you have multiple vectors is the way to put it. So to go back to the original question, how do we try to market this um, is twofold, but the, the easiest one is just through, um, uh, through attracting creators. We've, we've thought a lot about this and um, it's, uh, I think it's difficult to market a social platform directly to, uh, to users because uh, users themselves go where the content is. That's the most important thing. It's all about the content. Um, and the popularity of content is mainly based on, um, on the, the content creators and the personalities and basically the platform that they provide. Uh, you can say we have a platform, but you can, maybe it's more accurate that we have a service. But the, the, you know, the, it's more like a video service or a, or a social service. Um, and the creators are the platform. So what you want to do is make, um, first of all, make a, a, um, make a, a social network that is actually attractive for, um, uh, for content creators and then market the hell out of it to content creators themselves in the way that you do it is, is, uh, is approach them and set up interviews, uh, and let them... This time. Yes, exactly. Let them uh, review your uh, your platform. Um, maybe commission some reviews. There's all kinds of things that you can do. Uh, and even if you look at other platforms like DLive and Mixer and you know those streaming platforms, they just go out and buy someone. They bought PewDiePie, Mixer bought uh, Ninja and uh, Shroud, for example, and the, for like 50 million a piece, I think. So. It's not, oh. it's not the kind of money that we can uh, <laughs> compete with, um, but it's the same idea. And, uh, and the, the marketing effect that has is if, uh, if eventually you do get a big creator on your platform, um, it's not necessarily about their viewers, it's about all the earned media that you get because people start to talk about uh, your platform and people that don't necessarily our fans of this creator that you've brought in will start talking about your platform and it has this ripple effect. So that's, uh, yeah. so in general, it's all about the creator. So it's about you guys, we, we need to attract you. So. Simon, can, can I come in there to answer yeah. what you guys have been talking about in broad terms? One is, so BitTubers is a whole lot more than just a decentralized YouTube. Yeah. One of the, one of the services, and I don't understand all of it myself, right? But today I sent somebody a MP4 using BitTuber's AirShare application. This is like um, WeTransfer, but it has no, or FileMail, but it has no limits on the size of um, inf packages or files that you can send. No size limits, 10 gigabytes, 12 gigabytes, whatever. And it uses the BitTorrent framework and it's completely free. Now I go and send it to my friend over in India. He then learns and discovers, oh, wait a minute, I can use this application to send large files across the world for free. So then I'll tell somebody else. So a lot of this grows by word of mouth in the way that Facebook and YouTube and um, MySpace all grew by word of mouth. Then one of the things you were saying, Simon, about um, content creators coming in, like I learned today that Stefan Molyneux 
is now posting on BitTubers. Now he's a very large uh, content creator with a very yeah. large following. Yeah. So the people who would listen to, to Stefan Molyneux are going to come in and start listening to him on BitTubers and he's going to be promoting and talking about BitTubers. Now, I'm not anywhere near as large as Stefan Molyneux, but I'm telling you know people who follow my channel, come over and watch me, follow me on BitTubers because it's just freer. Mm -hmm. Just easier. I, I'm not afraid that they're going to shut down my channel and shadow ban me and all yeah. that. Stuff. Yeah, and the other thing uh, we need to keep in mind is we should be thinking distributed. Like, look what happened with YouTube. If you get shut down, what are you going to do? If you don't have a website, then the only option is Twitter, right? Mm -hmm. If you're only on Twitter and YouTube, then what do you do, you know? So I think it's good as a content creator to distribute to different platforms. Like, I also upload on DTube. Uh, because it's just so easy to upload. You usually just copy the YouTube link and paste it in. So are you guys also thinking they have something similar on BitTuber? So something that you can just copy a YouTube link and paste it in uh, yeah, to can, help with the upload, to facilitate it? You can already do that. This is not an, an upload, just an uh, embedded function at the moment. Um, but we, on the, on the old BitTube platform, we, we had an, uh, a previous version that was bit.tube, which okay. is now... It, it now redirects to the new platform. And we did have a, a, a YouTube uh, import function there. So what it would do is, is take a 720p version of your file and then re-encode it and upload it uh, to the site automatically. Um, but the, it had some problems. Um, for the most of all, it's the, the YouTube API itself. It costs a lot of money and it's a, uh, basically a pain in the butt to uh, because they change their API every day uh, half the time it doesn't work um, so uh, the, we decided when we built this platform that for now we could do without it uh, mm -hmm. and, and just try to uh, support um, uh, support such a feature by linking your account via uh, embedding so that's not the same as uploading. So it doesn't safeguard your content, but it is a way to cross post your content. And um, just to, to hook into this subject, this is actually um, one of the, uh, what we try to make one of the main unique selling features of the platform itself is um, because we've sort of designed the platform to um, maybe be a, a sort of Twitter slash uh, Reddit slash YouTube hybrids. Um, what we eventually want to support is that you can uh, cross post your tweets and your Reddit posts and SoundCloud and whatever you upload uh, automatically. So let's say you link all of those accounts and <laughs> you post anything that everything is also cross posted on your BitTubers no. account. Simon, I'm laughing. I'm laughing right now because yeah. um, it, 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 that that is a feature that it was beloved by freaking YouTubers, man. The whole fact that you can tweet uh, your content right from YouTube and stuff like that, and they decide yeah. to take it away. Yeah. And you guys are like, well, you know what? Screw it. Let's <laughs> we'll use it. Well, <laughs> I yeah. think it's awesome. So it's like it's one of the many things that YouTube is doing wrong. It's like they do the opposite of what the users or the content creators want. Well, YouTube is which is. Good. They, which they, is gonna which is gonna be their downfall, I think. Yeah. Not today, not tomorrow, but in yeah. my opinion, in my opinion only, I think that will be their downfall that they're not listening. I, I agree with the sentiment, but uh, I think if you look at YouTube, it's it's such a big company. Um, it's maybe the same thing that uh, that's happened with um, I don't know, take an example, IBM or something like that. Netscape. Uh, well, there, there's a, a lot of big companies that sort of disappeared from the face of the earth, but they're still around. Like, look at Yahoo <laughs> or AOL, right? Mm. They still exist for some reason. Um, so uh, what will happen with YouTube, maybe, is if they, uh, if they don't watch their back, then all of the original content creators will eventually leave because YouTube thinks it can make more money being Netflix. I can agree with that. And you know what? I may be in trouble by saying this. Um, uh, my, my future, I may get a strike for this. I, I'm posting this and that's something that I am willing to live with. Um, mm -hmm. The bottom line is I, I think I will be moving from them, but I need to find the right platform. Yeah. Period. Um, and mm -hmm. I, I think uh, uh, crypto chain made, made, uh, made another point 
that um, or it, it, it made me think about something. R recently, I've been watching some some videos of uh, Devin Nash. I don't know if, if you know the name. No. Uh, he is uh, he is a streamer um, and has been involved in, in esports a lot. And what he what he does primarily is try to educate people about um, how to uh, become a bigger streamer or a bigger content creator. And recently, he did a, a video. Um, uh, basically a remote stream for the University of Utah for uh, a couple of students. Uh, it's a video from a few days ago. Uh, so you can just go to Devin Nash and check out the video. It's like an hour long. And he explains um, uh, how the, what's the best way to grow your channel and to get viewers. And in in his case, it's how, how do you grow your Twitch channel. And uh, the problem there was that Twitch is not a discoverability uh, platform it just lists the most popular streams and that's it so where do you get all these viewers from and that isn't twitch it is instagram it's twitter it's youtube it's all of kinds of different sources and then basically it, the, the conclusion is that uh, if you're a content creator and you care about growth of your channel you need to start posting your stuff everywhere in yeah. different kind of formats and in different time zones uh, like time it perfectly uh, and just keep posting it where people are and, you know, uh, bring it up in different uh, contexts and stuff like that. And then suddenly you have 10 times the, the output of what you normally do. So, yeah, you know, what? And that, that, that's so true. And yeah. so many, so many people speak out on it. You know what I mean? Whether, and you know what, this is just kind of like a, and again, not paid for this or anything like that. And I'm not even on your platform. But that is one of the uh, major rules of investing, isn't it? Diversify. So why don't you diversify your future with what yeah. you're pushing out? Right. Well, yeah, it, and you need, it's, it, it's common sense, even if you don't really use BitTubers or another, let's say BitChute, for example, or there are, there are different uh, alternatives that have a decent service, you know, and it works. They have a decent comment section. Uh, you get views there. Yeah. Uh, li library is, a, is another example, which is pretty good now. Um, and uh, and what we're trying to do is um, is basically slot ourselves into the market um, where it doesn't where we assume that most um, most creators will be uploading everywhere uh, because the, I think that is the most realistic situation. Uh, uh, creators could have basically a, a home on say YouTube or Library or BitChute where they get the most views. But that, but if we create a situation where it still makes sense to also cross-publish on BitTubers, because the viewers there uh, will also earn for your content just just by watching your feed on BitTubers for the same content. But let's say you upload on Library and then you embed that Library video on BitTubers and you can pay double. Why wouldn't you do that? Right. That's that's the idea. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do it with with all kinds of content. You can uh, we can do it with tweets, and you can do it with uh, Reddit threads, and um, you can do it embedded, or we could actually uh, sort of copy paste the tweets uh, so that it's backed up, so the tweet can be deleted because it's permanently on YouTubers, for example. You can do all kinds of funny things with uh, with that idea, um, and uh, I think that is the way forward. Uh, at least that's the the way that we want to approach it. Instead of uh, sort of going for an uh, exclusivity uh, go walled garden type approach. I don't think that's that will be very successful in the in the long run. Maybe in the short term, there will be alternative platforms that will get the most exposure. Maybe voice.com or something because they have billions of dollars and they'll just pay for it. Um, but in, in the long term, it's, it's all about uh, sort of a, a sustainable ecosystem and, and a sustainable way of setting up of spreading your risk, basically. So if another platform becomes very popular, then if it, if then basically we can piggyback on the growth of other platforms because they will still, the views that they get will also triple, uh, how do you say it, uh, uh, ripple back to, to BitTubers itself. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Yes, definitely. it does. And it's consistent, sure. I mean, with what I know about BitTubers. Okay. It is, it isn't, it is like, okay, let's diversify and have content everywhere because that's smart. Yep. Uh, Claudia, you wanted to ask something. Yeah, what about the um, a mobile application? 
because a lot of users use their mobile to watch uh, content on YouTube. So what's your plan for mobile applications uh, for a mobile application with BitTubers? Uh, end of March. Uh, we are working right now on a new, like a, a real BitTubers native uh, application um, with like a fresh source code. Um, right, right now, the only way to uh, to access BitTubers is via the, just a mobile browser. So oh. what you can what you can do is go, uh, go on your Chrome or, or Chromium app, uh, and then uh, in settings you you go to BitTubers.com, and in the settings it says install BitTubers. And then what it does, it just installs an icon on your uh, on your uh, on your launcher. Um, but then if you open that, you don't. You don't get the uh, the browser itself. You just get the BitTubers interface. Okay. The, the same way Gab did it um, when they were booted off uh, of the Apple Store and uh, and Android. And um, we thought, well, why don't we do the same thing? It's a, it's the cheapest approach. At least you don't ba make a basic web version, um, so people have access with their smartphones. And then um when everything is is uh, sort of ironed out we can start with a mobile application um so we started that uh, about a month ago and uh, the established plan is to release the beta version end of march so that's end of q1 and then uh, uh, launch it fully um at the bitcoin halving right we thought <laughs> it would be funny to if there's a bitcoin pump maybe we should do something <laughs> with, with that so that's the uh, is it going to be on the Play Store and the uh, iPhone yeah. one as well, or? Yeah, that's the that's the plan, and I I think um, because, like I said before, BitTubers itself as a as a social plan, a social network is not a crypto platform. There's no wallets and stuff like that. We will have less trouble keeping it on on those platforms, right? Uh, there won't be any you know, uh, uh, sale of regulated goods or the, there's a wallet here and uh, we can see the transaction. So it's not right because there are all, all these kinds of policies in the, in the play store that says uh, any purchases that happen inside an app, uh, they want 25% of that, for example, yeah. that's just a fact. So they can go into any, any crypto app, even any wallet app, and they can just take it down based on that uh, principle. So that isn't very nice. So it, <laughs> we, we hope that uh, if we make an application that's completely crypto free, that we can like make crypto uh, free safely and, and still have all this you know, monetization around it. then I think we will struck gold, so. Uh, sorry, I have one more question if that's okay before. Uh, uh, just in relation to the voting power and um, payouts for content creators. So if a viewer really enjoys your content and he hits the like uh, and he holds a number of tube tokens or tube coins, do you actually get a certain percentage or share similar to like DTube have or do you guys use a different model for? Um... And they are completely separated. So, um, I mean, we, in theory, we could, um, uh, we, we could link those, right? We could say, um, if you, let's say you, you like a piece of content then automatically that also donates uh, like a flat rate among the coins, for example, that's, that's how Steam it does it, uh, yeah. right? You can upvote and then you, you get coins for that. And you can upvote your own <laughs> content and get rich. Um, but that's not the, the way this works. Uh, the, the tube uh, part is all, it's either voluntary donations or, uh, or recurring donation, for example, you can set that the recurring part basically as Patreon. You can set it up in, in the extension um, and airtime. So the so the watch time that you earn, and we will expand this, of course, because we uh, we want all kinds of uh, uh, Patreon type features uh, on the platform itself, um, mostly inside of groups. Right now we have public and private groups, and we want to really expand this feature. To um, to basically allow you to set up a, a, a sort of a Patreon page. So you set up a premium group. It costs some money to get in, uh, maybe monthly or maybe just uh, once, um, and then you start posting your premium content there, for example. And then you can set all kinds of restrictions on uh, that only you can post or whatever. And you can set the tiers that people that pay this amount, they get to comment what other people, you know, can't. And, that, and we can add chat rooms inside the groups with different tiers and basically how Discord does it and how 
uh, people on Patreon do it sometimes that if you pay more, then you you know go into a higher Discord uh, channel, for example. Okay, so personalized setting yes. for the channel. Exactly. So these are examples of what we can do with Cube, but this is all basically uh, you just need to be creative. We have a payment system. We have crypto, and we can do anything with it what we like. So it's just okay. uh, we need time and creativity <laughs> for that. So okay. sounds good. Sounds good. Thank okay. you for that. Sure. Jimmy? Um, I actually don't have too many questions. Uh, a lot of my questions were like really piled on and it kind of like went right in the trajectory that I wanted. I mean, the tokenization, I want to look a little bit more into it for sure because that's always important in the projects. I can't state that enough. Always understand the uh, tokenization of a project before you do anything. Oh, yeah. um, you know, uh, the copyrights we talked about, uh, you know, you also talked about the ecosystem and, you know, and you mentioned centralized and that's something that I wish people, more people understood that, that for the, as long as we are in this current state, there is going to be a small uh, portion of centralized before it moves on to decentralization. Uh, we're not there yet. We cannot just launch a purely decentralized platform yet. So that's not of a concern. Yeah, um, I I think that's uh, that's always a um, there's always a compromise. I think, and that's not, for sure. And that's not um, uh, that's not being like pedantic. Uh, right. The, the the thing is that if you if you live in a in a nation in a world of laws, there's always an accountable party. So there, and, there has to be there must right? be. And, and if you have moderation for for anything, uh, then there is some kind of centralization and. The way that, uh, if you look at Mastodon and uh, like the, the protocol, and the uh, Gab uses that now too. And if you look at the library as well, uh, library is a, is basically a protocol uh, with right now their app is the like the, the main the, the the main execution of that protocol. Uh, but anyone can um, basically uh, mute other servers. So it's the same idea, right? If um, uh, if you don't like certain content, you can choose not to watch that kind of content. But um, if you go to library.tv, that's basically a library's moderated, like curated content, right? So uh, that's basically their server. So if they they can remove stuff of that platform, and then uh, you can say, well, this is uh, this is centralized. But as long as you have the option to run your own server and it's open source. Well, yeah. Put for it, it, and then you sure. can set up your own rules and your own moderation. Yeah. That's uh, that in turn makes it decentralized, and and it makes it decentralized in a consumer choice kind of uh, decentralization. Yeah, some of the big crypto YouTubers are talking about that platform, like uh, Crypto with a Zero. He he mentioned it, I believe, after this issue with the censorship. Yeah, 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 yeah. and it's it's gonna happen. It's gonna continue, and you know. Uh, this was a, a cold run, like I told, uh, you know, these two fine gentlemen over here before we uh, Simon jumped on. This was a cold run for me, and you know what? I wouldn't have had it any other way, because um, I would, uh, I enjoyed uh, seeing everything as a, as an introduction. What you had to say, well, uh, you know, uh, Claudio asked some great questions. Rich, you've been talking about it for quite a bit, so that's great on you. Again. This is where you go into your DOR or do your own research type <laughs> mentality. Mm -hmm. like look more into it and you look under the hood. And that is where I am going. Um, so I do have to thank um, uh, Rich for uh, putting this together for sure. Claudio, also awesome like meeting you, man. And Simon, thank, thank you, you for much. Your time. Thank so yeah, thank um, you for the questions. Sure. Yeah, right. And that that's that's my half. So, um, so tossing thank it back you. up. Claudia, anything for you? No, that's it. I mean, thank you very much as well. You've answered uh, all of my questions as well. Uh, just some of the doubts I had. And uh, yeah, like I said, I've, I've always been open-minded when it comes to distributing my content. I do use DTube as well. I have tried DLive, but I'm not really into live streaming. So I will be looking at BitTubers, to be honest. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm going to distribute my content across the board. Sure, and uh, and uh, FYI, the D life itself is completely centralized, so <laughs> you can yeah. uh, you can it, it's basically Twitch. So it it is. Yeah, yeah. It's the same and, policies, and, so. and I I'm gonna say something, and then Simon, just thank you and thank all of you. Just before we finish up, 
So I said there's a lot more to BitTubers. It's not just a replacement to uh, YouTube. One of the things they got coming down the, the pipe, and if it's already available on Windows and Linux, is a uh, decentralized browser that runs on the BitTorrent network. That, well, that's, that's right, isn't it, Simon? That's, that's not entirely accurate. It's, it's, a, oh. it's, it's, a, it's a fire, yeah, I need to be truthful, right? Uh, it's, okay. it's a Firefox fork. Um, we, so we built our own browser. And uh, maybe this is maybe too much information at this stage of the conversation, but I'll just try to keep it to one minute. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to bitupapp.com, we have this extension, but also the browser. And the browser has the extension integrated. And what you want to do with the browser is actually, uh, that's basically the, 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 the last stage of our way to decentralize our platform um, is, uh, is uh, integrate the, the, the the local front end of BitTubers, uh, like locally on the um, uh, in the browser itself. So what that means is that we can do away with the website itself because the website is a point of failure. Uh, so you can take down the website because within, uh, if you if you go to BitTubers uh, within the browser itself, that's the plan. Um, then, uh, uh, then you log into the local uh, BitTubers and you connect to other peers. You connect to other users using the using the uh, the BitTube browser as nodes. You download videos from them, uh, stuff like that. So you you log into a web torrent network um, and uh, add a, add to that uh, Tor, uh, and then it's completely private and un untraceable. So even if you take down a website, you still can access the the same platform um, with the uh, the desktop app, which is then the browser. So that's basically yeah. the, the final stage where we want to go. So that's uh, that's the plan. That's in development. I haven't used that yet because <laughs> I'm on a. Map. And so, just reminding me, and this is a tease for those of you that are watching, mm -hmm. and uh, something for you to go and do your own research as well. There's also an integrated VPN within the airtime app. Oh yeah, yeah, which is uh, quite uh, quite handy, I must say. It works better than NordVPN. I've actually paid for NordVPN and the uh, and the, the the client never works. So it only works on my mobile. So, okay. So, and it's, well, it's, uh, it's free. So I don't have any problems with NordVPN and I have an affiliate link with NordVPN in the description below. Yeah. If you don't want to use that, you can use the airtime. <laughs> you can use the VPN within the BitTube airtime app. Careful of those description links. YouTube is watching you. I listen, I'm on BitTube. Don't, don't use NordVPN, use BitTube VPN. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay. Simon, listen, thank you so much. I know you came in at short notice. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Claudio from Critics. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys, as well. Thank Great. you so much. Very good. And uh, Happy New Year. Yes, Happy, happy New Year. Year. Happy thank you. All right. And for those of you that are watching, comments, description, please come and uh, subscribe to us on all our channels, Twitter, BitTubers, YouTube, wherever we are. And between now and when I see you next, please keep filling your pocket with BitTubers profits. This is Crypto Rich and Crypto Claudio and Crypto Jimmy and Crypto Simon signing, signing up. All the best. Bye-bye. Thank go. you. Take care. Bye-bye.